Hello everybody and welcome back to Dusty Finance and today I'm back again with another update on the financial markets and I think it's going to be a really interesting episode. Now before we get into it though, make sure you put in the comment section down below what I should change the name of this channel to. And now the main reason is I also want to post a lot of updates on making money through social media and some other ways to start some side hustles and all that type of stuff. And Dusty Finance just really doesn't doesn't pop off and do it for me. I want to have either like investing or money or business or digital in the name. I've been looking at some suggestions and something like simple digital money appeals to me. But man, I, I don't know. I want you guys' opinion on that. So put it in the comment section down below. Now, I must admit, a lot of today's news has to do with the UK, but I do think it applies on a, you know international scale, completely worldwide, but we'll see as we go further. Let me know your opinion. Chancellor Sunak orders review of capital gains tax. Again, this is in the UK, but one of the things people have been talking and, and really fearing about is that some bigger tax regulations or in this case, capital tax or capital gains tax situations could make our lives worse. And the main reason for that, that people are fearing of the tax man right now is because of the pandemic that was going around. And maybe the government in a lot of these countries is wanting to go for a little bit of a tax raid to get some of this money back that they've lost during the pandemic, of course. And I'm also wondering exactly about that. Like, what are they going to do tax wise to make us pay? Or what are they going to do to get some back? And I've been thinking and theorizing, but I, I really don't know just quite yet. But this one is an interesting one to see, because I'm also wondering if something's going to happen in the EU or in the US concerning this capital gains tax. I listened to Warren Buffett and invest in this share. I read the title and I instantly want to tell you guys to not listen to this. If anybody tells you go and invest in this share, you should automatically despise that share because there's most likely something under there that's rooting because why the frick would he tell this? I don't really know. But on the side note, I just want to say Warren Buffett always says to either go for like an index fund like S&P 500, which is pretty stable and just follows the market, which does ridiculously well, or make sure you research an insane amount and go for some really key small growth stock. So you go for some crazy companies and crazy opportunities, but that would take a lot of time. He's often said to have read 20,000 pages or more before investing. So again, are you going to have the time to do that? I don't know. OBR, public borrowing set to top 370 billion amid worst crash in 300 years. Um, the reason I actually put this in here is more so for this part here. Worst crash in 300 years. Now, it's kind of been looking like a recession is coming up, right? But it's also kind of been looking, if we look at any of the major indices, that the recession is already like left behind. And you'll see here in a second if it loads, because what it's kind of looking like is we, we, we've we had the past, the, the worst already here. The worst has, has come, as you can see here on March. And from now on forwards, it's kind of looking like it's going to get better and better and better. And the big question is, will a big recession still hit or was this it? You know, is this what people feared for? Because that was really when the pandemic hit the worst. Or was that just a little bit of a preparation for what is to come really shortly afterwards? I don't know, but it's something to think about, right? It's something to think about. A lot of websites are posting up as if this is a recession because it went from, this is S&P 500, it went from about 3,400 um, 3, points, let's say, to about 22. I don't know how much exactly that of a loss it is, but at least 50% was taken off here. Yeah, that's crazy, guys. So let's say if the half were about 1,700. Well, actually, not at all. But uh, I guess, yeah, a little bit less. Let's say 40, maybe 30. I don't know. I'm not. When you're recording, things like that become a lot more difficult to do. But quite a big chunk was taken away, which um, is, in my opinion, still pretty damn crazy. If you put it into perspective, it doesn't really look like that much. If it's like this, it looks like way more. But still, it's a huge amount, right? It's a huge amount, and it put us back like a whole year or so, which is still really interesting. Update 2. Virgin Atlantic agrees $1.5 billion rescue deal. CEO says deal will see airline emerge sustainability profitable. 
Barson's Virgin Group chips in 200 million pounds, and private only deal follows to call for government help. Adds detailed context. Well, one thing I found interesting is that a lot of these companies still need to be rescued, and I'm still wondering exactly what the US were to do if some billions of dollars, some real billions of dollars, or possibly even hundreds of billions of dollars were needed to save some more companies. Would they still continue on with the quantitative easing, or are they really, really dumb right now? And are more stimulus checks really, really coming, or are they done? And is it all going to stab us in the back, or or was this it, you know? And that's really uh, with the idea of, is a bigger market crash going to come or not? And, and that's something you should be wondering about as well, because we don't know. Okado has waiting list of 1 million customers wanting to sign up. We're running a bit of a club, says chief executive, as grocery firm sales rise 40% in May. Now, one thing I found interesting as well is that a lot of these grocery stores were doing extraordinarily good during the time of the crisis. And I'm wondering if they're going to have to pay in, in terms of a certain tax or something like that for the rest of the world or for the rest of the industries because they've done so extraordinarily well. Now, here in Europe, and specifically in the Netherlands, a lot of the really just normal, but a little bit more luxury goods, like for example, the more expensive peanut butter, just a normal brand, have all gone up in prices because they can, and of course, things have become a little bit more expensive. But with that, most likely, a lot of these retail stores, or I guess grocery stores, have also been making more profit as, I guess, the amount of people going to shops didn't really go down at all. But are we gonna? Uh, is the government gonna decide something to make those pay a little bit more for the rest, or is it just gonna stay stable? And also, really, just think about it. What would need to happen for grocery stores to really go down? You know, could they ever? Even if the worst crisis ever were to be coming, would they ever close down still? Because binging, is it ever gonna be necessary, or really, really never? I'm wondering. All right. In brief. Stobert divests rail and civils division amid losses. Stobert Group Limited, the civil engineering company, says its Wally owned subsidiary Stobert Holdings has divested of Stobert Rail Limited, which owns the rail and civils division, to Bavaria Industries Group AG for an initial cash consideration of 1,000 Great British Pounds. An additional cash consideration of up to 2.9 million pounds may be received based on the outcome on conclusion of a single legacy contract and this follows the commitment made by the Stobart to exit the rails and civils business by the end of its financial 2021. Following the continued losses within that business, the agreement is on a debt-free basis including the waiver of intercompany balances involving Stobart Rail. Current stock price 28.60. Here today change down 74%. Reason I'm showing you guys this is these are opportunities, possibly, to get yourself into a stock, right? Because here you can see Stobart divest rail and civil division amid losses. If you're really into trading individual stocks, these are more opportunities you should be going for. Looking for a very juicy, solid pick for right now to, you know, possibly get the recovery for. Those are ones you can go for and those are ones that he could recommend. However, it's always the more risky approach and... You know, it's it's really a lot of work as well. You got to update yourself every single day about what's happening, every single day looking at it because you're exposed for longer periods of time uh, while most likely still continuing in the losses. And it's risk. And that's, again, why I'm like, stay away from those if you don't want to be involved in all of that. UK's ban on Huawei 5G industry reaction. Well, I don't know. I think China never likes it when things get banned. However... I don't really care about this personally. I, I just think it's all it's all a little bit of of, of, me, of a mess or no. It's like a little bit of a... Um, I don't know exactly Reus in, in Dutch. I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, but it's not that important. Americans quick to use cloth masks as government recommendation. So yeah, um, most Americans wore cloth face coverings after the government recommended their use in April. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said in a publication released on Tuesday. And I think a lot of people have made some serious money with all of this. And actually, a lot of the companies I was looking at that have been selling a lot of goods, like the face mask, shout out to Ninja Turtles, and uh, the hand sanitizers and the soaps and whatnot have been prospering like crazy in the last couple of months. And that's also one thing I'm, I'm thinking about as well in terms of how long would they be doing good for? And when would that switch over? When would these sales deteriorate and do bad? 
U.S. warns of sanctions as Libya's oil chaos persists. By the way, we're hearing less and less of the big uh, Saudi U.S. oil situation or actually Russia oil situation going on. We're hearing a lot less about it. But now finally one, ha, I'm acting like I'm happy to see it. Finally, one new article coming out about oil, in this case, oil chaos over at Libya. After Libya lifted the, and, or no, after Libya lifted and then declared, again, force majeure on all of its oil exports in the span of just two days, the United States warned that parties in the conflict that continue to undermine Libya's economy and seek confrontation face isolation and risk of sanctions. After six months of port blockades and no exports, Libya's National Oil Corporation said on Friday that it lifted force majeure on oil oil experts from Libya. Pretty interesting, guys, about all of that. However, just two days after lifting the force majeure, NOC declared force majeure again, citing a renewed blockade on its oil export terminals and blaming it on the interference from the UAE. Yeah, very interesting situation. But uh, more on that is to come. And then Silver Lake offers concessions to secure $2.6 billion global blue deal. Private equity firm Silver Lake disclosed a string of concessions on Tuesday. It offered to push through the $2.6 billion sale of its Swiss payments company Global Blue to blank check acquisition company Farpoint Acquisition Corp. Which again could be interesting to a couple of y'all. But um, most of you I don't think really care. That was a quick finance update for right now. Uh, more is coming as today was a little bit of a day of what is going to be happening, what is going on. But it's also because I got to get back into these financial updates, man. But uh, tomorrow, going to be back with another one. Stay tuned and I'll see you guys again in another finance video.